morning family. Here we find ourselves one more time. The Lord has blessed us and kept us. Here we are this uh, third Sunday of December uh, on this nippy Sunday morning, but God is still in the blessing and the keeping business. I want to just say first and foremost, good morning to you because it is truly an honor and a privilege to have you chime in to the broadcast this Sunday morning. We pray now uh, that God would bless you. We pray that he's been blessing you all week. We pray that he's going to bless you by these 
moments that we will share together uh, as we prepare to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Yes, we are drawing nigh to the end of 2020, looking forward to 2021, praying that uh, next year uh, is going to be an even better year. Amen. I know that this has been a strange year. This has been a year of struggle and challenge, uh, but through it all, God has still been keeping us and he's still been blessing us. And here we are one more Sunday morning with our virtual worship, amen. If I can, I do want to just share a couple protocol measures this Sunday. First, I do want to know, let you know uh, that you can not only join with us, you can join with us not only, excuse me, uh, by virtue of our Facebook broadcast, but you can also join with us by virtue of our conference line. I'm excited uh, to know that God has allowed us to have a couple different measures in which we can share. If you decide that you want to share with us on the conference line, you can call the main number, uh, 605-475-4000. Uh, most of us should almost know that number by heart now, but 605-475-4000. Once you have gotten there, you do need an access code. The access code number is 1030819, and then the hash sign. That's the little tic-tac-toe sign. Uh, if you would, go ahead and make haste, and you can log on to with us through our conference line. If you are a part of our conference line, I am going to ask, help me. Help me to share the word of the Lord. The way that you do that is by putting your phone on silent, uh, because we know that as soon as we get to a point that God is going to bless us, most of the time the enemy will send in some distractions, and we don't want to be a distraction to someone else. And so please put your phone on mute so that way we can share with each other today. Amen. I'm happy to announce uh, that once again in our midst, we do have Brother Joe Brown and also Brother Frank. Uh, these two uh, gentlemen uh, have just been a blessing to us throughout uh, 2020, uh, 2020, amen, with their skill set and with their talent. And so I am going to ask that they will open us up with a selection, and then we'll come back and we will follow the order of service. Amen. Bye. 
Amen. Thank God to uh, these young men uh, for reminding us and sharing with us that great uh, seasonal peace, knowing that Jesus is truly the light of the world. Amen. Amen. If I can, I just want to share one verse with you by virtue of our scripture lesson today. Uh, it is uh, found in the book of Luke, uh, the second chapter, uh, the seventh verse. Uh, it is uh, part of our liturgical calendar uh, that we share these uh, words with you, words that we've heard many, many times before, and I believe God is going to bless us with these words again today. Um, I do want to allow you to know that uh, there's no great new epiphany that will be given. However, through these words that will be rendered, we will be able to see uh, what God did for us way back many years ago uh, in a town called Bethlehem. Luke, the second chapter and the seventh verse simply says this, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Amen. We're going to ask that God would bless us, that will be our pericope for today. Uh, we're going to ask that he will bless us mightily from the word of the Lord. Amen. Uh, won't you pray with me? Lord, here we are one more time. Thanking you for the holiday season that we're in. Thanking you for the perfect gift that is the birth of that salvific lamb, Jesus the Christ. We pray now that we might be able to hone in and focus in on you. That you might give us revelation. That you might Reveal yourself to us so that we can see you more clearly. And Lord, we also pray that not only will you give us revelation of you, but we ask that you would give us revelation of self, that we might be able to see ourselves in you and see how the Christ works in us, works on us, and works through us. Pray now that your spirit would fall fresh upon every person that chimes in this Sunday morning, wherever we find ourselves today, O oh Lord. We ask that you would convert our personal space to a sacred space, that you might come in and fill the room, fill it with thy own spirit. invite you in now. We open up our arms to you. We open up our ears to hear you. We open up our hearts to receive you. Come in right now. Have your way, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. And all that love the Lord said, Amen.
that is what we're here for today, to worship a living Savior and to simply say that we have come to adore him. Amen. Uh, we know that that is a Christmas piece, but actually that should be our mentality each and every day uh, that we are able to enjoy God's grace and his mercy. Uh, once again, I am going to ask that these men would come and share with us a uh, selection. Then we'll come back and share just a few announcements and uh, we'll get right on into the word. I believe God is going to bless us today. I'm excited about what he's going to share. Amen. <laughs> Sunday morning as we look forward to this week. Uh, as we already have stated, which you already know, uh, we are in the holiday season uh, and this will be a short week for us this week as far as the office hours. I do want to uh, inform you uh, that uh, the office will be open on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from the hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Of course, we will be closed on Christmas Eve and course will be closed on Christmas Day and so if there is anything that you need um, I would suggest to you make sure that you would get with the office on Monday Wednesday or uh, Monday Tuesday or Wednesday from 10 to 4. Now let me share with you uh, because we will not be in the office uh, if there is something that is time sensitive uh, that demands immediate attention I am going to ask that the family that the membership if you would reach out to your gospel family leader, your deacon, that's what they're there for. Uh, they will uh, be on call on Thursday and Friday. Uh, 
Uh, and in that way, they can disseminate that information. Uh, I'm sharing this with you now uh, because sometimes what happens, persons might call the office over the holiday uh, with a time-sensitive message, and we might not uh, be there to immediately receive that message, and we do not want to uh, you to feel as if you do not have the membership services that you deserve. And so I am asking that if uh, on Thursday and Friday, if there is anything that's time sensitive that uh, requires our immediate attention, get with your gospel family leader, your, your deacon, uh, your deaconess, and they'll make sure that that information is disseminated uh, in a timely fashion. So we do want to get that out there as well. Uh, next Sunday, I'm excited, man. Next Sunday is the fourth Sunday. It's the last Sunday of 2020. We're going to send 2020 out. Amen. I'm excited about what God is going to do in 2021 if he allows us to see it. Amen. Uh, and so we want to conclude 2020 with a high note. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I have not had the chance and opportunity to see some of you since February. Wow, since February. Some uh, since March, but... We have not had communion face-to-face -face since February. And so I'm going to do something different. I'm going to try something different. And I'm going to try to have a drive-through communion. Lord have mercy. Uh, we, we're looking forward to it. We're excited about it. We're getting a plan together. This is the first time, the first time I've ever done it. It's the first time Canaan has ever done it. And so is it going to be perfect? I'm pretty sure it won't be. Uh, we will have uh, some glitches along the way, but I already know it's going to be fine because we got your complete cooperation. And so this is uh, what we're trying to do. On next Sunday at 2 p.m., we're going to ask that you would come up Newton Street. If you would turn onto our parking lot, I'm going to be out there. Deacons are going to be out there. Uh, trustees are going to be out there. Deaconess are going to be out there. Amen. Uh, we're looking forward. Uh, we're going to be able to serve you. I'm going to get a chance to see you, give you communion, and then let you drive off. Uh, we know that it's not going to be uh, conducive for us to have a drawn-out conversation, but at least I can put my eyes on you. I'm excited about it, man. I, I've been missing seeing some of the members of Canaan Baptist Church. I've been bragging all my friends. I said, I came up with the idea to have drive-through communion. Uh, they asked, where you get that from? I said, the Lord told me to do it. Amen. And so uh, uh, I'm looking forward to having just a moment in which we are able to share on next week. And so, uh, as I said before, we're going to have you come in on the Newton Street side. You're going to drive out the uh, back side of the uh, driving, uh, the driveway, excuse me, the parking lot. Uh, trustees are going to be on point. They're going to be able to guide us and direct us. I'm excited about it. Now, with that being stated, I'm asking you, make plans to get here if you can. Make plans to get here. If you can, be safe, but make plans to get here uh, because on next Sunday, Deaconess will be passing out their 21-day fasting manual. They're going to pass that out on next Sunday. I thank God for them for uh, already catching the vision. Uh, deacons are going to be here and uh, have correspondence with you. I thank God for them for catching the vision. Uh, and then also, too, they're going to be here to help me to serve communion on next Sunday. Now... I know some are going to say, well, are you having communion after service? Yes, at 2 o'clock <laughs> on the parking lot. And so I'm pretty sure you can read between the lines. We won't have it as we have traditionally done it during the course of this year, because I want you to come out and see me, if you can. Now, for those persons that are not able to come, I'm going to work a plan. Don't worry, we'll work a plan. But if you can, I'll catch a ride, drive on by, so I can give you communion. I can see you. I can bless you, and, and by seeing you, that'll be a blessing to me. And so we look forward to next Sunday at 2 p.m. We'll be on the parking lot, we'll start at 2, and we'll start to move uh, persons expeditiously through the parking lot, and so you're able to get communion. I'm excited about it. We got a plan worked out. So just get here, because I do believe you will be blessed. Amen. Let me also say to you, uh, as I've said each and every Sunday, I thank God for those persons who have been generous, been generous to the church. I make this same statement, but I want to add a little something to it today. I know that uh, they tell me, I've been in church long enough, I've been in church leadership long enough, 
that when you get to this time of the year, sometimes the giving starts to slow up. But let me tell you, ministry still has to go forward. It still has to go forward. We need you to partner with God so that we can do the ministry here at Canaan Baptist Church. It's God's grace and his mercy that opens up doors for us to be able to do what we have to do. But it's your generosity that meets God's grace and meets his mercy so that we're able to accomplish. Look, let me share this with you. It's cold outside. People still look to the church uh, for clothing. Uh, it's cold outside. People still look to the church to help with their housing. Uh, it's cold outside, but people still look to the church to help get a meal every now and again. Those are just local missions that we have here right outside the church. We still partner with other uh, ministries to do our foreign missions. And most importantly, we still have the operation of the church. Amen. Lights are still working. Uh, internet is still up. Heat is still in the bu building. Insurance is being paid on the building. These things still have to go on. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be transparent. We still are paying staff. Amen. Uh, our office administrator is still in the office. Uh, our sextant is still working. Our musicians are still in place. And yes, the pastor, he's still uh, in place as well. And so things still have to go on. And so I'm asking you, uh, be considerate and consider to be generous with the church. I know uh, that for some right now, things might be tight, it might be a struggle, but do not discount what your obligation is to the church. There are three ways to give. We already know e-giving, traditional mail, and you can drop off your offering as well. I'm not gonna go through that today, you already know, but I do appreciate all that you are doing in advance, amen. I'm going to ask, uh, as we prepare to hear what God is going to give us today, that uh, Brother Frank, Brother Joe would bless us, but let me say this to you before uh, we go forward. I do want to allow you to know that on next Sunday, we're gonna give Joe and Frank a little break, just a little break, just a little one. We're gonna give them a little break uh, for the last Sunday of 2021. And we have asked a Canaan favorite to come back and be with us on next Sunday. Brother Holland is going to come and he's going to play the pipe organ for us on next Sunday. And so I know uh, there are several members who love the sound of the pipe organ. And so uh, he'll be with us on next week. We're going to change up things a little bit, give him a chance to uh, share some different things with us. I do want to say publicly, though, I thank God for Lisa Henderson. Uh, she has been a blessing to us this year with the music. I thank God for Joe Brown, who has been a true blessing to us this year, not only Sunday morning, but also playing for funerals and things of that nature. I thank God for Frank, uh, who just came on in, and uh, he didn't know us when we started this year, but we have adopted him. He's like part of the family. He cuts up with the rest of us, amen. You should see how these boys act when the cameras are not rolling, but we do appreciate them as well. And so we appreciate all persons that have worked diligently to make this year, uh, make it a success, and it has been successful. We've had challenges, we've done things that we didn't know exactly how we were gonna get it done. We had to kind of stumble our way through, uh, but we didn't miss a beat. I thank the media team, uh, Sis White, uh, Tasha, Reed, Elena. Uh, I don't wanna start calling names because I know I'm gonna miss some people, uh, but I wanna thank them because guess what? Uh, they stepped right up and did what was needed to be done. And uh, persons have made their own personal investments just to make this happen. And so I do thank God for them. I want to thank God for my trustees. Uh, they still they still check in here, uh, just like as a job. Amen. Punch the clock. My deacons, they're still uh, doing what they need to do. And so if I just really started naming people, I would really, I uh, know I would overlook some folk. I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna be mad with me right now and say, he forgot to make mention of me. But I'm just saying, I thank God for everyone who's made this year a success uh, because it has been successful. Uh, we had to do some things this year to get through, but we were able to get it done. So we appreciate you for chiming in each and every week. We appreciate every person who's worked in the background to make this happen, amen. I'm not gonna say nothing else. 
Uh, really, I didn't took up all my preaching time with thanking people this uh, Sunday before Christmas. And so I'm going to ask these brothers to uh, bless us again with a selection. Uh, and then uh, we're going to come back. We're going to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. to the New Testament book of Luke. Luke, the second chapter. Uh, as we prepare to uh, share with you um, just a few holy hints from heaven, a couple of uh, nuggets of knowledge that I believe God would have for us on this uh, Sunday before Christmas. Amen. Luke, the second chapter. Once you have gotten to Luke 2, I want to ask that you would focus in on one verse, which is the seventh verse. And to be honest with you, once you have gotten to the seventh verse, it's just really one small piece of, piece of scripture uh, that we will be lifting up and elevating today. I believe it is the E portion of that particular passage of scripture, but it reads like this. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him 
in swaddling clothes. And she laid him in a manger. But here's where it gets good for us. Because there was no place for him in the end. Because there was no room for him in the end. That's all I want to talk about today, if I can, just to pick up one portion. I believe uh, that God is going to bless us even with that one portion of Scripture. As we prepare to share our Sunday morning discourse with this thought in our mind, there's no room in the end. Let us, let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you yet again for this Lord's Day. A day that we have never seen before and know that we'll never see it again. So even in the moment, we realize how blessed we truly are. We pray now that you would envelop the room, that your spirit would fall fresh, that the words of my mouth might be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are still my strength and you are my redeemer, and I need you now. We pray that we would be able to elevate points that would be a blessing. And in as much as we're able to elevate a few points of knowledge that you would bring back to our remembrance those things that are important, but then also share with us those new things as well. Lord, I understand it's not my education, it's not my knowledge, nor is it my might. And I say publicly that if you don't do it, then it won't get done. Make it plain that your people can see it. Make it plain that your people can hear it. Lord, make it plain that we can live by it. In Jesus' name we do pray. And all the love the Lord said, Amen. stand on the calendar. It is hard to believe that here we are once again at that time of the year in which we call it the holiday season or Christmas. This time of the year has been traditionally set aside for celebration, family gathering, fellowship, food, and gift-giving as we celebrate the, the birth of our Savior. Now, it is no secret that 2020 has presented us with a different type of year. 
And because of all that we have seen in 2020, this Christmas season might not be what we have seen traditionally. However, it is still incumbent upon us that we take time to recognize and celebrate the birth of our Christ. Today, we dive head first into the full gospel. We touch base on the first part of the full gospel. Now, when I say we touch on the full gospel, I'm not talking about the denominational movement or any particular title that has been assigned to the church, but we touch base on the full gospel because the full gospel is the five parts of the life of Christ. We touch base today on part number one of the full gospel because we touch on his birth. Not only in the full gospel is there his birth, but it's his life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension back to heaven. That is the full gospel. And with that being stated, we look at this full gospel with this thought in our minds as we see that God allowed himself to be wrapped in cloak in flesh, had his son to come through 40 and two generations, dwell amongst men because we needed a savior. As we think about this savior, this salvific lamb, we know that it is incumbent upon him that one day he will die and he will become the savior of the world. We know the story that he will rest in a borrowed tomb from Joseph and in three days he will be raised from the dead. We know these things, but the story begins right here. It begins uh, at this particular moment, even though uh, the arrival of the Savior has been prophesied about throughout the entire Old Testament. Most importantly, 700 years before the birth of Christ through uh, the prophet Isaiah, uh, it was spoke of that there will be a Savior that is to come. This is where the gospel starts. And because God does all things well, there are different nuances about uh, the birth of Christ that are important to us. Most of us who've been in church, we know the biblical account of the birth of our Savior. It is uh, the account in which there is a man by the name of Joseph and a woman who is in the mother's way. She's expecting. And she's expecting and she shared with Joseph that, uh, that she is pregnant and she's expecting a child. That's not Joseph. Joseph was engaged to be with her, and his first initial thought was to put her to the side so as not to disgrace her. Uh, but we found out that the Spirit of the Lord spoke and said, No, you will be the earthly father to God's only begotten son. He decides to step up to the responsibility and what responsibility uh, that has to be that's playing in his mind. And because of how things are being laid out, he finds himself having to go to a little towny town by the call by the name of Bethlehem because there's a census that's going on. And when he gets to the small town, he finds out that people from near and far have two flocked on the town and there's no room so that his expecting wife can give birth to this child. Many scholars have argued, they've argued that uh, the word end, I-N-N, -N, is not the proper translation of the Greek, that actually uh, the word is to be translated as guest room. But that's for them to argue. Because the word of the Lord says there's no room in the end, let us stick with what the word of the Lord says. As we look at this particular biblical account, most of us 
would say, I know the story and we often overlook some of the biblical account, but I believe since God does everything well, there is a purpose and a reason for everything that has happened. So I ask the question, if God's only begotten son is to be the savior of the world, if God's only begotten son is to be the one that will purchase the redemption of the world. If God's only begotten son is the one who will purchase salvation through his blood, surely there should have been some better accommodations for the Savior when he came. But the text says that there was no space, there was no room in the end. And so if I can, I would like to just look at this concept, look at the fact of why the savior of the world was born in a scenario and in a situation in which the world did not have space to receive him. I believe God is going to allow us to see uh, in Jesus' birth scenario, even some stuff that will help us out in our day-to-day -day journey. As we've already stated here in the second chapter of the book of Luke, the seventh verse, it says uh, that uh, Mary, she's going to give birth to her firstborn son. She wraps him in swaddling clothes. She lays him in a manger because there was no room for her in the end. Why? would the Lord allow his son, why would God allow his son to be born in a place in which there was no room? He had to be born out back in the barn. He had to be born around the goat, the sheep, and the oxen. He had to be born around the chickens and born around all of the farm animals. Why would the Lord allow his only begotten son to go through such a tumultuous entrance into the world. I believe God is going to give us just a few nuggets of knowledge this Sunday morning. And prayerfully, you got a pen so you can write some things down. Because I believe God is going to bless us. The first thing it tells us there is that this is Mary's firstborn son. This is, uh, she's getting ready to give birth uh, to Jesus Christ. This is the beginning of the Savior's life. This is the uh, genesis. This is the apex. This is how everything starts right here. And he starts out not being born in an inn or being born in a hospital, but actually he's born out back in a barn. Why is that important? Well, a point number one that I want you to understand today is that this right here allows us to know that as we go through this life, it's not always about your origination, but it's about your destination. It's not about always where you come from, but where you are going. In this text right here, we see that Jesus' origination is out back. We see that his origination is out in the barn. We see that his origination is in a pig trough. We see that his origination is not something of quality. We see that his origination is not something that speaks to his stature, but it's not about where he came from, but it's about where he's going. And the truth of the matter is, is that you and I have to understand that that's the same thing that applies to our life. It's not about where you came from. It's not about your origination, but it's about your destination. You can be straight off the farm or straight out the projects, but but if God is still blessing you, it's not about where you came from, but it's about where you are going. You can be the one that has come from a broken and dysfunctional home, but it's not about where you came from, but it's about where you are going. You can find yourself coming from a broke and busted situation, but it's not your origination, but it is your destination. Yeah, right. Truth of the matter is this, is that so often in life, we get so caught up and we get so wrapped up with the fact that we didn't have the best of things when we were coming up. We get caught up in the fact that we might not have had good things when we were coming along, but the truth of the matter is, is that you might not be where you want to be, but if you look back over the course of your life, you can say, Lord, I thank you that I'm not where I used to be. Yeah. It's not about your origination. Jesus Christ shares with us as he enters into the world 
because this particular place right here, uh, we see that he has stepped into the world. His origination is a place in which most would say, why are they treating the salvific lamb, the savior of the world, who is a treasure, why are they treating him like trash? It's not his origination. And the fact of the matter that we know it's not his origination is because even though he was born in a barn, he's still God's only begotten son. Even though he was born in a barn where they had no room in the end, he's still going to die for the salvation of the world. Even though he was originated in a barn, he's still going to purchase the redemption for all mankind. Even though he was originated in a barn, he's still going to be able to open up blinded eyes. Even though he was originated in a barn, he's still going to open, he's still going to straighten crippled legs. Yeah. Even though he was originated in a barn, he's still going to be able to give sight to the blind. Yeah. He's going to be able to allow the mute to talk. Yeah. He's going to be able to allow the lame to walk. Even yeah. though his origination was in question, it's not his origination, but it is his destination. Yeah. And so I challenge you today. I challenge you today to understand and know uh, that it's not always where we came from, but it is about where we are going. Where are you going on this Christian journey? Where are you going to find yourself as you prepare to walk through this burned land? We have to understand and know that it's not about where we always came from, but it is about where we are going. And the truth of the matter is you never forget where you came from. But the fact of the matter is, is that understand that if God is allowing you to continue to draw breath, he's still carrying you to a new destination. Not only should you understand and know uh, that this particular passage of scripture allows us to know that it's not our origination, but it's our destination. But then also too, we have to understand what's taking place. Jesus Christ, who is God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who is Alpha and Omega. Jesus Christ, who is a bridge over troubled water. That's what the old generation would say. Uh, Jesus Christ, who is a rock in a weary land. Uh, Jesus Christ, the one who is a, a battle axe in the time of trouble. Uh, Jesus Christ, who is the one who is able to purchase our redemption. He is God's only begotten son, and he's born in a barn because there's no room in the end. What does that mean to me? Well, number one, it means that it's not your origination, but it should be your destination. But secondly, it also means that where you are doesn't always match who you are. Oh, can I preach it like I feel it this Sunday morning? Understand this right now. For those persons who would say, yes, I know it's not my origination, uh, but it's my destination. But Lord, I'm in a bad situation right now. I want you to understand that Jesus Christ has already allowed us to know that sometimes you can be in a place and the place that you're in does not match who you are. You are still a child of God. You are still a child of the high king. You are still God's chosen one. You are still the one that he died for. You are still the one that he loves. You are still the one that he went up to a cross for. You are still the one that he laid in a grave for. You are still the one that he stayed there for. But you're still the one he got up three days later for. Where you are doesn't always match who you are. The text, the text, the text says, the text says uh, that Jesus Christ, who is God's only begotten son, he's born out back in a barn. And now he is supposed to be the savior of the world, but yet and still he's born outside on a farm. But I want you to understand that in as much as his entrance into the world is not one of prestige, his entrance into the world is not one of great stature, it still does not negate that he is still the savior of the world. And I want you to understand and know that as you go through this life, you might find yourself going through some rough spots. You might find yourself in some rough places, but just because you are there does not negate who you are in Jesus Christ. Where you are right now does not necessarily mean and let me be honest with you, I know that this year has been tough for many of us. This year has been a challenge for many of us. This year has had its struggles for many of us. But just because you might be struggling, that does not mean that God has forsaken and forgotten you. Just because you might be going through a difficult moment, that does not mean that God no longer loves you. Just because you are in a certain place, where you are does not always speak to who you are. Amen. Where you are doesn't always speak to who you are. It's not only, not only your origination, 
but it's your destination. But also understand that where you are doesn't always speak to who you are. But then also, this text tells us something else. Not only does it speak to Jesus Christ being born in a barn, but it also speaks to the character of Joseph and Mary as well. Understand this, that Joseph has a pregnant wife. He is moving from Nazareth, going to Bethlehem. As he's going to Bethlehem, he knows that his wife is due to give birth at any given moment. But he understands he has to get to Bethlehem so that he can be a part of the census. But he also knows that if he goes to Bethlehem, he's not going to be able to make it back in enough time to Nazareth. And so he gets to Bethlehem and he starts knocking on doors, trying to see if he can get some accommodations for him and his pregnant wife. He's knocking at the Motel 6. They won't let him in. He's went to the Red Roof Inn and they won't let him in. He went to the Best Western and the Comfort Inn. They won't let him in. And so after a while, he says, look, I, I understand that nobody has room for me. If you just give me some space out back in the, on the farm, yeah. then I will do what I have to do. Yeah. Well, why is that important? Well, Joseph shares with us and he allows us to know that sometimes our circumstances might not be the best, but whatever you got, whatever's available to you, you got to make it work, baby. You can't find yourself sitting there on the stool having a pity party, saying, if I just had this, I could do this. Or if I just had that, I would do that. But sometimes you gotta take what you got, and after you take what you got, make it work to the best of your ability. Uh, uh, let, 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 me, let me give you another example. Uh, for those of you who uh, came up in a country house, uh, 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 and those of you who came up in a country setting, you know something about taking the little bit and making it work for you. Well, they tell me there was a time in which uh, the generation of old, they would get a sack of potatoes and they would cut the potatoes. But you don't throw that good bag away, no. You don't throw that bag away. No, you, you go somewhere and you take that bag and you make that bag a shirt or a dress somewhere. I believe somebody can say amen. And then if you was fortunate enough to have some turkey at the holiday, well, you don't have turkey just on that holiday date, but after turkey, you're going to make some turkey salad, yeah. you're going to make some turkey stew, you're going to make some turkey muddle, and then after you've done all that stuff, you're going to take the bones and put the bones in some soup to give it some flavor. Everybody have to understand that you don't always have the best circumstances, but you make it work with which you have. And if you can make it work, then God will make up the shortage. Right here. We see that Joseph, Joseph has found himself in a precarious situation. His circumstances are not the best circumstances, but he says, you know what? I can't sit here and just start to mope and start to pop and start to complain about what I don't have. I need to just take what I do have and make it work to the best of my ability. Can I encourage somebody here the Sunday before Christmas? I don't know, you might be saying, well, you know, Christmas ain't gonna be the same this year. I want you to understand, I can't go see some of my family. I can't do some of the things that I used to do. I can't buy some of the gifts I used to buy. I can't do some of the stuff that we've done in years past. But let me tell you, if the Lord allows you to see Christmas morning, you take the best of what he has given you and you make it work to your best ability. If you can't go see family, you can still pick up the phone and call family. Uh, you might not be able to buy gifts, but guess what? You can still tell somebody, happy holiday, Merry Christmas. You might not be able to do some of the things that you used to do, but understand, instead of sitting there pouting and moping about what you don't have, say, Lord, I thank you for what I do have, and I'm going to make it work to the best of my ability. Not only should we understand it's not about your origination, but your destination. Not only should you understand uh, that it's where you are doesn't always account for who you are, but then you should also understand that your circumstances might not be the best, but you make them work to the best of their ability. It might not be the ideal situation, 
But even though my situation ain't ideal, I still got an idea of how to deal with the situation. But then also understand this too, that Jesus Christ's entrance into the world, because there was no room in the inn, shares with us something else. That God can still bless you in strange places. Lord have mercy. Can I preach it like I feel it this Sunday morning? I don't care where you might find yourself. If you find yourself in a strange place, God is still in the blessing business. Yes, it would have been nice if he could have been at the Howard Hospital. It would have been nice if he could have been at Georgetown. It would have been nice if he could have been at Providence. It would have been nice if he could have been at Sibley or Holy Crosses. But he's out back on a farm. But let me share with you, that does still not negate the fact that when the Christ was born, it was still a blessing. Even though he was in a strange place, God still finds a way to bless us, even in some strange places. Amen. Can I be honest with you? We all family. We all family here. Uh, I, I, when I was coming up, I, I came up in the country. I tell anybody I came up in the country. And, and, and D.C. Uh, was, to me, considered to be a strange place. I, when, I, I'll be honest with you, D.C. And guess what? Even though I'm here, some days I still consider D.C. to be a strange place. But can I be honest with you? God is still blessing even in strange places. Oh, Understand and know that God can still bless you even if in your mind, the circumstance does not quite fit. In your mind, uh, the circumstance does not play out the way you think it's supposed to be playing out. In your mind, it's not the ideal situation. It's not the ideal place. It's a strange place. God can still bless you in some strange places. Amen. Right here, we see that Mary and Joseph, they are blessed on the backside of a farm, uh, over in the barnyard. They got their child, their unborn, I mean their child, their firstborn child laying in a manger, which is no more than a pig trough. They have placed him in a pig trough to be born, and even though it's not the best circumstance, they still look down at the child that God has given them and say, this is still a blessing. God can bless you even in some strange places. But then I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you got to give me one more point. I got to have at least five points that I can give to the membership on this Sunday before Christmas. You got to give me just one more point. Why would you allow your child to be born in a barn? Mm -hmm. Why, oh Lord, would you allow your child to be born out back? At the farm. Why would you allow your child to be born in a strange place? I talked to the Lord and I asked him, why would you send the salvific lamb, the savior of the world, to a tiny town called Bethlehem? He said that was prophecy. He had to be born in Bethlehem, but it was not prophesied that he would be born in a barn. It was not prophesied that he would be born on a farm. Think about it for a moment. Yeah. Uh, the stench of the animals. Think about the feces of the sheep yeah. and think about the cows and yeah. the hay and all of those things yeah. uh, that was going on. Lord, tell me, why would you allow your child to be born on a farm? And the Lord spoke back to me and he said, I did it for you. Oh, yeah. I said, wait a minute, how in the world, the allowing your child to be born on a farm. How? Allowing your child to be born in a barn. Allowing your child to be born around sheep and oxen and asses. And how is that a blessing to me? I don't understand it. He said, well, if I had allowed him uh, to be born at a five-star hotel, if I had allowed him to be born at the Waldorf Astoria, or if I allowed him to be born at the Rich Carlton, if I allowed him to be born at the Salamander, or the Fairmount, or the Mandarin, then I want you to understand, I let him be born in a barn because I knew you you, Owens, you would never be able to have access to any five-star hotels. And so I allowed him to be born in a barn that way that you can have access to who he is. So he knew that one day Owens would need him. So he said, let me allow him to be born out back in a barn so that you can have access. He knew that Patton would one day need him. So he said, let me allow him to be born out back in a barn.
on. He knew that Jackie would one day need him. So he said, let me be, let him be born out back in a barn. He knew that Carlton would one day need him. So he said, let me let him be born out back in a barn. He knew Philip Murphy and Carl White and Tony Terry would one day need him. So he said, let him be born out back in a barn. He said, I did it for you. He said, I did it. I did it because I knew you wouldn't be able to have access to him over at a five-star hotel. I knew that the common man wouldn't be able to have access to him at a big-time resort so that the common man can have Jesus Christ, so that there wouldn't be any disconnection between you and the Savior. I let him be born out back in a barn with all the other animals. I did it not for him, but I did it for you. And so guess what? This Friday that's coming, as you think about Christmas, and you say, well, what kind of gifts am I going to get this Christmas? Let me tell you, your greatest gift that you have ever gotten is that the God who created everything allowed his son to come through 40 and two generations. Yeah. The greatest gift that you've ever gotten is that the God who created the heavens and the earth yeah. allowed his son to be born in a manger. Thank you. The greatest gift that you ever got is that the God who created everything yeah. allowed his baby to be wrapped in swaddling clothes. The greatest gift that you've ever gotten yeah. is that the God who created everything gave you a savior that will become your intercessory and your connection to the Father. The greatest gift that you've ever gotten is came to us one cold December night in a town called Bethlehem of Judea. I thank God for the gift of Jesus Christ. Can I say thank you? Thank you for the gift, Lord. Thank you for your son. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his birth. Thank you for his interest in the world. Thank you for allowing me to know it's not my origination, but it's my destination. But thank you for allowing him to be born out back in a barn so I can have access. So I can have access to the Holy One. On today, I say to you, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I know that this has been a strange year. Some of us are not able to enjoy Christmas as we think that we're supposed to. We're in a strange place. But as I said to you before, that you might feel that you're in a strange place, but God knows how to bless us even in some strange places. Not only should you understand that God is still keeping us and he's blessing us, and I know this year has been tumultuous, but if you are allowed to see Friday morning, that's the greatest gift. That's the greatest gift. That's the greatest gift. Because if I could uh, coin the words of President 45, Donald Trump, he said one good thing in these last four years that I want to share with you. He said, people are dying that ain't never died before. <laughs> and if you still here, that's a blessing. Thank God for Reverend Donald Trump for giving us one gospel, one gospel point in four years. Because that's the truth of the matter. Folk dying that ain't never, that ain't never died before. <laughs> and we still here. And so that's a gift. That's a gift from God. I want to say Merry Christmas to you. Uh, to all of those who uh, are going through tough times and ambivalent moments, understand that God is still blessing you. He's still keeping you. I know for some of us, this season is not what we expected it to be. We were kind of hoping this stuff would have passed by now. But God is still, he's, uh, he's still keeping you. He's still keeping you. He's still blessing you. And he's still giving you gifts. You might not know it, but just by virtue of the fact you're able to chime in this Sunday morning, that's a gift from God. Man, that's a great gift from God. You can't find a better gift. In a moment, I'm going to 
have prayer. Maybe someone doesn't know the Lord. I'm going to have prayer with you. I'm going to ask that you will repeat that prayer with me. Because let me tell you, everything in this world is temporary. But if you have a relationship with the divine, you can have eternal life. Before I have prayer, I do want to also share with those that are listening in, if you need a church home, why don't you try Canaan Baptist Church? We would love to have you here. My God, would we love to have you here. I say to you, you can reach out to us, even in a virtual setting, email, uh, drop us a line um, through our comment section. We'll get with you. We have a program in place. We'll bring you in. We would love to have you here. I'll tell you, the best part of this branch of Zion is not our singing. It's surely not the preaching. It's not the cadence of the ushers. But the best part of us here is that we have a genuine love for one another. We are family here, and we would love to have you as a part of our family. Maybe you once was in church, you once had a relationship with God. I say to you, why don't you, why don't you turn back to him? This is the best day to turn back to him. Can I tell you why today is the best day? It's because yesterday is gone, and tomorrow is not promised. We would love, we would love to have you come back into the fall. If you don't know the Lord, I'm going to ask that you would pray this prayer with me. Simply say, Lord, I confess you. I confess you as my Savior. I confess you as Lord of my life. I am a sinner, and I need you to come in. I open up my arms. I open up my heart for you to come in right now. I confess that you died. But I also confess that on the third day, you was raised from the dead. Would you come into my life? In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hey, let me tell you, if you prayed that prayer, you are now saved. Yes, you are. It's just that simple. The Lord has come into your life. Now, let me tell you something. That's not the end. There's still some things you need to do. You need to get with a Bible-believing church. We would love to have you here in Canaan. We teach the Bible. We love the Bible. We learn the Bible. But maybe Canaan is not in your immediate area. You need something a little closer. One thing I can tell you is that we work in a network. I'll do my very best to find you a church, a Bible-believing Christian church in your area. You can still reach out to me. I'll do whatever I need to do to help you out. But you need to be in church. Amen. You need to be with a family that will hold you accountable, but also allow you to grow in the grace of the Lord. Amen. Let me say to the Canaanites, once again, Merry Christmas. I thank you in advance. I thank you for some of the tokens of love that have been left for me here at the church. I appreciate uh, some of those cakes. I appreciate some of those pies. Amen. God bless you. Uh, I'm going on a diet, but not today. Amen. <laughs> not today. And so I am. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm speaking it into existence down the road. Yes, I'm going to. My wife asked me, she said, are you going to be a part of the fast? I said, yes, I am. She said, when are you going to start? I said, today. She said, you starting the fast today? I said, yes. I'm going to go in here real fast. And give me something to eat. Amen. That's what I told him. Amen. Just a little joke in my house. Just a little joke in my house. Amen. Don't you be offended. That's just me joking with my family. Amen. Let me also say this to you. That uh, we do have a gospel, jazz gospel concert that will be happening on watch night. I'm excited about that. A jazz gospel concert. Uh, we're going to have Minister Lisa and company. I'm just going to put it like that. She's going to have some people here. Uh, we're going to have a, a Christian good time. We're going to listen to gospel jazz, gospel jazz, uh, as they will come and they're going to 
to uh, share with us with their instruments. They're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And so I'm looking for that. That's going to be March 9th. That's December the 31st. Uh, but also, too, let me share with you, we will still have our stroke at 12 midnight prayer. Uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, when the new year comes in, you should be on your knees praying. Uh, the old generation used to say this, whatever you're doing the first day of the year, you'll be doing that all year long. That's what they say. I'm not superstitious, but that's what they say. But if there's anything to that, I want you to know that we'll be praying when the new year comes in. So that way you can say, when this year came in, I was talking to my father. I was talking to the Lord. And let me be honest with you. If we ever needed prayer, oh, Lord, have mercy. We need prayer now. Amen. We truly need prayer. Don't forget, next week, we will also have our drive through communion. You'll be getting some more correspondence on that. But go ahead and make plans to get to the church parking lot by 2 p.m. on next Sunday. I want to see you. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm excited to be able to see some of my members one more time. Amen. For all of those who chimed in, I thank God for you. I appreciate you for deeming in that robbery just to spend a few moments with us today. Amen. Let's prepare to be dismissed. Gracious Lord, I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you that you allowed your son to be born in a barn to give me access that I can one day uh, be able to get to him, that there would be no disconnection. Lord, we pray that everything that has been done on today has been satisfying to you. We ask, oh Lord, that you would bless us in our coming and our going. Bless be the ties that bind us together. Now unto him who's able to keep all of us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. I declare power be his now henceforth and forevermore. And all that love the Lord.